what I care about the land here and what they will destroy it for their own financial and political gain. Senator Villa's bill would ban the hydraulic fracturing process in New York State. More local towns are taking it upon themselves to ban this destructive forces of gas industry by zoning, land use ordinances, or temporary moratorium bills. But we have a problem here. The Republican leadership is not led on this issue. The leadership has blocked every bill in the Senate and Assembly to stop fracking. We're calling on Republican Senate leaders to quit blocking legislation that will protect the people of New York State. We call on the Republicans to actively step up and oppose Governor Cuomo's rush to fracking New York State. We believe Governor Cuomo will issue permits within several weeks from now. I want to introduce Brad Loeb. Brad Loeb's earliest memories is in Candlewood Church Service in New York City. His parents, Reba, and the late Dr. Eric Loeb, carried their two-year-old boy there after a rally against the Vietnam War. That year was 1969. Less than 20 years later, this boy would have devoted half of his life already to learning and honoring, honoring David Peter's way. Today, our sun dancing has served the planet in other ways, some of which include capital quest for justice in New York State. Bram was the organizer of door-to-door -door canvases who helped stop the dangerous plans to pick one lucky county to receive nuclear waste. As part of the Do Not, Don't Waste New York campaign, Bram helped make 9,000 face-to-face visits happen all over the threatened portions of New York State. People talking to people. I introduce to you Bram Lowe. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Harry. But not to seem ungrateful, there's something missing, and it is my profound respect for and support of the Occupy movement. So, Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! It is a crime to poison us! 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 and endocrine disruptors. The DEC fails to study the cumulative effects of these chemicals and radioactive frac fluids being sprayed as brine on our roads and migrating into streams, rivers, and drinking water supplies. The DEC fails to study the long-term effects on our farms and food shed. All we need to do is look to our neighbors in Pennsylvania to see the effects of four years of fracking. There are many Pennsylvania residents who have had their wells contaminated and now must have water delivered for drinking, cooking, and bathing. There are reports of sickness and death both in humans and in farm animals. Abnormally high levels of barium, strontium, and arsenic have been found in water and in the blood of residents next to gas wells. We have read report after report of well blowouts, spills, leaks, explosions, and accidents methane migration and chemical contamination of water sources, as well as other socioeconomic impacts, such as increased crime and drug use and rape, and as a result of the influx of a transient workforce. The political fracking game is in play, with both the Democratic governor and the Republican Senate poised to take credit for looking wise while studying the issue and then ultimately giving in to their corporate masters. 
The game will be to give pseudo protection to New York City, Syracuse, Finger Lakes, and Cooperstown areas while allowing fracking to occur in the southern tier. The game is to fracture the state and then frack us, all while giving political cover to both corporate owned parties. But we know, due to the economics of the gas industry, that it is not currently profitable to frack. Gas is selling on the international market for six times as much as the domestic price. The game now is to gain entry into New York State, build infrastructure of pipelines, compressor stations, and liquid natural gas export facilities so that the shale gas will be sold to the highest bidder, more than likely China. There are a few bills in the New York State Senate that can stop the fracking nightmare that lies just to the south of the port border in Pennsylvania from becoming a rat reality in New York. The hazardous waste bill, Senate Bill S416, already passed through the assembly and now sits and waits for consideration by the New York State Senate. Currently, frac fluids from Pennsylvania are being trucked into New York State and have even been sprayed on our roads as brine. The EPA has stated that the DEC has not accounted for the regulation and treatment of radioactivity in frac fluid, and yet currently it is unregulated and can be sprayed directly on our roads, leaching off into our farmlands, streams, and rivers. There is no compelling reason why waste produced from oil and natural gas activities that meets the definition of hazardous waste should not be subject to the same laws regarding generation, transportation, treatment, storage, and disposal as other hazardous waste. This bill would change that by classifying this waste as hazardous and regulating it accordingly. Senate Bill 4220, sponsored by Tony Avella, um, and uh, Assembly Bill 7218A, would ban the hydraulic fracturing process in New York State. More and more local towns are taking it upon themselves to ban the destructive forces of the gas industry by zoning and land use ordinances, or temporary temporarily by moratorium bills. The New York State Legislature needs to listen to the citizens of New York State who wish to protect their communities, their land, water, air, food, farms, and children's health. But we have a problem. The Republican leadership has not led on this issue. The Republican leadership has blocked every bill that would serve to protect us from ever coming to a vote on the full Senate floor. State Senator Toxic Tom Levis claims to be neutral that he wants this decided by science and facts, not by emotions. He pretends to be neutral while advocating for supposed safe drilling and even has a website for the purpose. Republican Senator Ball knows the horrors of hydrofracking after touring fracked areas of Pennsylvania and meeting with the victims of the, un of the unnatural shale gas industry. Senator Ball has stated that he would support legislation for a moratorium if the legislation were allowed to proceed to the Senate floor. But even Senator Ball could do much more to co-sponsor Senator Ravello's ban bill. Now, one interesting thing is that the New York State Senate passed a bill last year that would make it a crime to defile a water supply. That bill died in the assembly, of all things. But the bill that would make it a crime to defile a water supply only applied if you were a terrorist, not if you were a corporate terrorist. We call on the Republican Senate leaders to quit blocking legislation that would protect the people of New York State. We call on the Republicans to actively step up and oppose Governor Cuomo's rush to frack New York State. We call upon the Republican Senators to protect the environmental, economic, and public health interests of all of New York State. It is a crime to poison us. So, in a nutshell, it's a poisonous process that won't bring anything good out of the ground for people living in the U.S. or everywhere, ever, or elsewhere, really. And most of what the industry is saying about it is a lie. So let's remember the words of other activists who've gone before us. Mike Jack! Mike Jack! Mike Jack! Mike Jack! Mike Jack! It's our duty to fight! It's our duty to fight! It's our duty to win! It's our duty to win! We have nothing to lose but our chains! We have nothing to lose but our chains! It is a crime to poison us! It is a crime to poison us! Thank you, Frack Free New York! Thank you, Frack Free New York! Frack Free Nation! Frack Free Nation! Frack Free Planet! It's a crime to poison us! It's a crime to poison us! Thank you! Thank you.